this is the complexity and tractability merit part of the external. This is talking about the heuristics. I've put a number of heuristics up, so I'm assuming at this point you've been able to explain why complexity and tractability is a problem. You've looked at practical examples and you've determined that once n gets to a certain number, it becomes intractable and impossible to solve, regardless if you throw more computing power at it or not. The next stage of the external is to jump through and say, we are able to solve it by writing software that employs heuristics or a set number of sequences to go through and solve efficiency problems um, like delivering Coke or uh, some of the other practical examples you may have looked at, traveling sales maps. So brute force, I'm not going to talk about. Brute force is trying every single possible scenario. So if we had our dots on the board like this, it would be starting here going, trying, 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 try that, try that, try that, try that, try that, 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 etc. until you tried every single different combination. Um, this here works and it will give you 100% the most efficient solution, but as n becomes larger, then the solution takes longer to solve and becomes intractable. There are other heuristics that you can apply. So one way that gives you a good solution, but not necessarily the best solution, is employing the nearest neighbor. So if I had a series of dots on the board, instead of running through every single possible one of these, if our starting point is here, we're just looking for the closest neighbor to it. And so it would compare that, 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 and that, and realize that was the first. And then it would compare that, 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 and that, realize that. That's the next closest. 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 That's probably the next closest. That's the next closest. That's the next closest. That's the next closest. And that's the next closest. Now that is definitely not the most efficient way to solve that problem. However, the computer could be programmed to solve that exceptionally quickly. And it's come up with a solution that is really high. So if I had done that with that many points, I could do that exact same thing something that had an inordinate number of points and the computer would still be able to run through and come up with a solution as best fit. So the nearest neighbor is an algorithm that looks for the closest point to the starting location or to the, the, the location that you're currently at and then it will navigate its way through. Occasionally however you will end up with these crossover points where it comes back on itself, which is not efficient, but it is still more efficient than trying every single possible uh, solution. I'm going to leave this one on the board because we're going to come back to this nearest neighbor when we hit these improvement heuristics down here. But the next one I want to talk is divide and conquer. Divide and conquer would look at a sample size like this and say, this is simply too large a data set to solve. And so what you could do is to break that data set down into uh, much smaller numbers that suddenly are able to be solved. So if I looked in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's seven to solve in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to solve in that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine in that one, etc. as you work around. So if I was trying to solve that, I might go like this, and the computer could employ the next one, the nearest neighbor, or brute force, because n isn't very large in this, to try to solve each different solution. And then you'd have your large problem broken up, divided into chunks, and solved as smaller increments. It's definitely not going to be the most efficient algorithm overall, but it again is much more efficient for solving speed-wise than the brute force. Um, we could look at this problem here where I've got another number of dots. And use another algorithm that when you first 
think of it may not sound that efficient, but actually can prove to be quite efficient, which is the random. And random works by simply looking at that sequence of so many things that you're trying to solve over here and starting at this point here and just having a go at solving it. So the computer can start brute forcing by starting at this point and trying a series of them and start at another one and try a series and start at another point and try a series. Remember, a computer has got a processor that can perform a large number of calculations, so it can actually try the different iterations. It just can't try them all. It will take too long to try them all. However, you could say, run this one here randomly, starting at different locations, like 20,000 times, maybe 50,000 times, and then take the most efficient one that you found out of all of those, and we will use that. And if you have a large computer with a number of processors, your, your numbers that you may be able to try may be in the millions or the billions of, of processes that you may be able to try. And one of those you may find is exceptionally efficient. So you might look at this and say the total distance, uh, if we're looking at this large number here, we ran it and the best distance that we generated over here was uh, 1.5 um, kilometers. The next best was like 7.5 kilometers. Well, then you're pretty confident that this one here was, was a lucky one that you may have hit that was able to solve that as quickly as possible. Who knows if you maybe get better, and it works for large sample size. It, it is random, and sometimes it works. The last one is a comparison model, which is sort of works on the theory of random where you let it run and it goes through and it tries to solve a certain way at starting at this point and then it tries a different one starting at this point and a different way of solving at this point and then it looks at the average of the times or average of the distances that it covers and it says overall it was much better starting at this point here. And so you can then look at parts of how things were solved and say that was quite efficient and this was quite efficient and combine those together. It's sort of like divide and conquer, but it's a different algorithm that sorts it out. The last things that, things that I want to cover are these efficiency or improvement heuristics. You can't solve the traveling salesman problem or a problem like this using a chaos solution because a chaos is only looking for improvements in an existing solution. So I'm going to go back to this algorithm here that we worked on earlier on, which was the nearest neighbor. Start here, 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 and then we had to cross back. And that crossing back is where our inefficiency was. Our chaos is a heuristic that looks for where there's crosses or a, a line has gone back on itself or back over itself and it attempts to uncross it. So it would look at this example here if we were to run a chaos heuristic and it would say, we've got a problem here where we came up. What happens if we uncross that? So we take that line out and we take that line out and we go from there and we uncross it by going from there and there across and we suddenly made our solution much more effectively by using the two opt and the two opt was uncrossing two lines. If you had a system that had, let's just put one of those back in, uh, a cross that went there and a that went just put an extra point in here now I've got one two crossovers or three crossovers and that would be where you'd use the three opt heuristic and it would look for cross one cross two cross three in the software and it would try to 
unhook those lines and allow you to reconnect them by uncrossing them. And this solution here was much more efficient than the other solution. You can see you can't solve the traveling salesman using KOPT because it's only an improvement heuristic, but you can take an existing solution and improve it by running this once you've run one of these. In the excellence exemplar, I talk about a timetabling issue where it's a real life problem and you run the brute force or the nearest neighbor or divide and conquer or random in comparison to go through and try to come up with a way of solving timetables at school. You, for example, excellence, could choose any problem and then run through how these things would work and why they would be used at that particular time to get the excellent. But that is heuristics explained at the merit level. Your job was to link those back to the example, the practical example you did for achieved, and solve the problem that you came up with as unsolvable in achieved.